Pokemon Black and White introduced the largest and most controversial group of new Pokemon. 15 years later, these same Pokemon are now fan favorites, and Game Freak would be crazy not to give new forms and evolutions to Pokemon like Scrafty, Drudagon, or Crocodile. Hey everyone, it's Dusty Go Go. Welcome back to my headcanon. Every single year, we get a new Pokemon game, and with that, new Pokemon designs. And right now, Generation 5 feels more relevant than ever. Whatever new Pokemon game we get next, I want the attention to be on Gen 5 Pokemon. All right, let's start things off with the Unovan starters. I'll be honest with you, the Unovan starters are some of the most disappointing generation of starters of all time. It's like, I like the designs, but why is Superior not a dragon type? Why is Samurott not fighting type? And why did we get a third fire fighting Pokemon? Embor should have been a steel type, which actually is reflected in these great designs right here by SB Fakemon. Rather than just having a slight uh, neck beard, Embor actually develops this massive beard that covers its entire chest, acting as its own set of armor. And I think in this design, the fire element of the starter Pokemon is way more present and it looks like a warlord of fire. This honestly would be the best starter of the trio. If we get a Legends Unova game, the setting of Unova is likely going to be a lot different from the Unova that we're familiar with in Black and White and Black 2, White 2. This is going to be a region that is so different that it actually forces Snivy, Oshawott, and Tepig to evolve differently with new attributes in order to survive whatever that terrain is. Superior was always underwhelming to me because a pure grass type starter that had been done many times before and it also being a reptile, it, it always just felt like a knockoff to Sceptile. Superior is great, but give it a new type. If not Dragon, I think electric works really well here. And this is also a type combination that we don't normally see, so I like this a lot. And snakes are fast. We also have this regional Samurai. I think the water and ice type was overplayed in generation one with a lot of the Kanto Pokemon. You've got Dugong, Lapras, Cloyster. There's a lot of water ice type Pokemon that I feel weren't very good. But if this thing had the right stat combination, this thing could be a force of nature. And I love the design of its shell. It's an, it's made of ice. It's great. Awesome. I can see this thing jetting through the water with swords made of ice. This is a really great design by SB Fakemon. So my next gripe has to do with evolutionary items. There are so many items that are specific to and only applicable with a single Pokemon. I think it would be great if a lot of these items could be shared among a plethora of Generation 5 Pokemon to inspire new evolutions. For instance, we have the Ruffian Pokemon, Scraggy and Scrafty. What if you gave these little lizards a dragon scale? Maybe you could awaken something within it. We have a great design here again by Zeldo. Their design is not dragon type, but I love the blue accents on this Pokemon. It becomes this massive Pokemon with giant arms, and you can see that it's stitched together. It's shed skin. It's got a gold tooth and a mask. This thing feels like it would be a Batman villain. I love this Pokemon so much. So I kind of like the Timber line. Timber, Girder, and Conkledur all hold different items that you would find on a construction site. Listen, a lot of people don't like the Timber line, but I do. So I thought maybe I would correct this by creating a new cross-gen evolution for Girder. If you give Girder the metal coat and trade it with a friend, this Pokemon will become fighting and steel type and become a metal worker. This Pokemon now wields these massive metal working hammers. It's got this smooth, glossy red color that reminded me a lot of the red that is seen on Scizor, which is also a Pokemon that evolves via metal coat. And most of all, I've covered its face, which a lot of people say is pretty ugly. The metal anvil that a metal worker would use to craft certain items, the anvil is now fused to its head, acting as a sort of helmet and hiding a deep secret. I like to think that the red metal that Girder is holding fuses with the metal coat and melts all over its body. Drudagon is another Pokemon that I love so much, so I decided to create another metal coat evolution for this Pokemon as well. Drudagon is a cave dragon that has partial inspirations from a gargoyle. I thought it'd be really cool to apply the metal coat and to accentuate a lot of these features. This Pokemon is now dragon steel type, and I based the color pattern palette on a blue-tongued skink. This Pokemon is still covered in spines, its wings triple in size, and the metal coat really allowed me to make a new evolution of Drudagon that leans into the gargoyle aesthetic. I have not named either of these Pokemon yet, so let me know in the comments what you would name these Pokemon. On the same idea of utilizing some of these old 
evolutionary items. Here's a water and dark type evolution for Crocorock. This is a water type crocodile that functions very similarly to a regional evolution. What happens when you take this sand dwelling crocodile Pokemon? What happens when you give it a water stone? Well, it turns back into essentially like an alligator or a water dwelling crocodile. I think the color of this Pokemon pops so well. You get the red and the white and the blue to really represent the, the water typing. It still has its pointy black sunglasses, which I think works with the design, representing the dark type. I can see this thing in the anime or the games acting as a lifeguard. Now we've got a water type Solosis line. Solosis evolves into Duosion, and then it evolves into this new Pokemon that looks like a tardigrade, also known as water bears. This is uh, like a micro animal. These are some creatures that live in some of the most bizarre places on planet Earth. They're like these little creatures that have like six arms. Like I said, they've been dubbed the water bear, and I think this would make it an adorable design. Here's another Duosion evolution that's a little bit different and not as cuddly. This is a psychic and poison type, and it's basically a virus, right? I think this this art, this render of the Pokemon is so good. I would love to see more forms and evolutions. I feel like there's a bunch of iconic microscopic formations that this Pokemon could take inspiration from. I feel like I only know of them because of like cartoon depictions where the main cast would like shrink down and go inside of like a human body, and then you get to see all these formations of cell life, microscopic life. The Generation 5 Pokedex gets a lot of criticism for being a soft reboot of the Pokemon franchise, specifically with Generation 1. But I think what it fails to do that Generation 1 does very well is add more cross-gen baby forms for some of these standalone Pokemon that were introduced in Unova. Buffalant, Sigilyph, Drudagon, Cryagonal, and even a normal type baby monkey to join together the elemental monkeys is actually adorable, endearing, and makes me like the monkeys. This would function like a Tyrogue, right? Glyphlet, I think it's called Glyphlet, evolves into Sigilyph, and you can see like the, the unknown inspiration there is striking. I love that. That would add so much lore. Crisscross is a great name, but that is the baby form for Cryagonal. We got Ludrake which would is a, this little tiny lizard that would evolve into the cave dragon Drudagon. We've got Scruffalo, this shaggy looking calf that evolves into Buffalant. But let's segue into that because Zeldo, the creator of the Andu region, has already fleshed out and created a concept for a baby Pokemon that evolves into Heatmore. This is Heat Run. It's a pure fire type. It's the exhaust pipe Pokemon. This Pokemon looks tough. It looks bold. Like it would not be afraid to fight with other Pokemon that are stronger than it. And I really like how its butt is shaped like the exhaust pipe of a motor vehicle. I think that is a really cool addition. And you know, babies, babies poop. So you, you get your Heat Run, evolve it into Heatmore. More, and then best of all, you evolve your heat more into Moto Rage, the fire and steel type. Amazing type combination, right? And this just fits so well. This Pokemon has two different forms. My favorite part about this design is how you can see the fire erupting out of the Pokemon's body, and its whiplash tongue also looks like the fire element. This is something that I feel like has always been missing from the design. Heatmore feels truthfully like, a, like an anteater, but this new evolution, Motor Rage, feels like a Pokemon. And while we're on the topic, why don't we give Durant, the rival of Heatmore, a little bit of an upgrade. The creator of the Andu region has given Durant a baby evolution. This would be Screwva. It's a little larva that looks like a screw. This new baby Pokemon, Screwva, has the potential to evolve into four unique Pokemon. Basically, any of the roles that ants would take in an in a ant colony. We have the male only. This is like a worker ant, Murant. We have the female only in winged evolution, Summant. We have the basic Pokemon, Durant, this is what we're familiar with in the Generation 5 games, and then the extremely rare female-only Queen Ant. And what's best of all is that this Pokemon Queen Ant has three unique formations, each of which correspond with a specific stat buff. And I love these fluorescent colors, the blue, green, and red. Each of these remind me of the pheromones that a Queen Ant would give off to indicate and to inform the colony uh, what kind of position that they should enter into, right? Should they be defending the colony? Should they continue to work. A design like this would be incredible and turns a Pokemon like Durant from forgettable to a classic staple on any team. Next, we've got two regional evolutions for a Pokemon that I think is pretty underwhelming. Muna and Musharna are the analog or, or counterparts for Drowsy and Hypno. I think both of these Pokemon have really interesting inspirations, but the Pokemon themselves are underwhelming. These Pokemon are normally based on dreams 
dreams, but I think SB Fake Mons is based on a nightmare of some sort. And then you have Mr. DJ Walnuts being based on insomnia, or actually I think it might be based on night terrors. You can see in the dream mist coming out of Musharna's uh, forehead are what looks like these evil shadowy faces. We talked about Scraggy and Scrafty a little bit earlier, but I wanted to bring up this art by Horatio. Scraggy get an electric and dark type. Scraggy are punk kids. I've always read it as like more hip hop in that regard, but these designs feel like pure punk rock or almost like goth i think the electric type fits really well with these designs you've got the yellow shedded skin but then also the hair is now just crackling electricity and a pokemon like this would fit really nicely if we saw a character a gym leader like Roxy, I could totally see her using this Pokemon on her team. All right, let's talk about the Unova Dragons. Here we've got regional forms and evolutions for the Axew line. This whole line now is Dragon Steel type, and I think they are very cool. Rather than axes being the design philosophy behind the Pokemon, uh, which truthfully, this Pokemon could have been Dragon Steel from the get go, right? If it's, I mean, it's tusks or, or look like an axe, I think it, it could have always got away with it. Anyways, this new Pokemon now has chainsaws all over its body, which is kind of ridiculous. Axew evolves into Fracture, and then Fracture into Chainsaurus, which again feels like a dinosaur. Come on, this thing looks way cooler than a Garchomp. I think this thing has pseudo-legendary potential. And here's another design by SB Fakemon. This is a regional form of Dino Zoelius and a new regional evolution, Hydruck. All of these Pokemon are dragon and electric type, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. The beta design and inspiration for the Hydreigon line was originally supposed to be a, a tank, a battle tank. That is a type of weapon, and the way I'm looking at this Pokemon now is that rather than being fueled by dark energy, a dark destructive energy, it's another type of energy, obviously electricity, but this reads like plasma in a lot of ways. The core of its body still resembles this burning fire within it. And also because it's fueled by electricity, this type of energy has revitalized the two distressed heads of Hydreigon where all three heads now are as fearsome as the other. This Pokemon now is a true Hydra. Excellent job on this on this design, man. And in the opposite direction, I had to do one more form of Hydreigon. This Hydreigon is a fairy dragon type Pokemon, and the artist has named it Reborn Hydreigon. Whatever new games we get going forward, I think we can expect to see more standalone Pokemon like the Blood Moon Ursaluna. Blood Moon Ursaluna, in a lot of ways, functions like a legendary Pokemon because you can't actually get it through evolution. You can only get it in whatever standalone form that you capture it. This Pokemon reads like that a sad, tired Hydreigon that has spent its entire life creating destruction finally has a time to rest and like a phoenix it is reborn with a new life and a new opportunity to create life all right it wouldn't be a true generation 5 video without a discussion of the original dragon the story goes that originally there was one original dragon that split into the three pokemon we know now kiram zekrom and reshiram a lot of fan theories suggest that there was once an original dragon that can be achievable when all three pokemon feel together and I think one day we might actually see this. This artist has depicted this new Kiram called Whole Kiram as a dragon in normal type Pokemon. This looks like what harnessed energy would look like is pure energy kind of like an ultra necrozma the physical aspects of its body are pure gray but all of the energy seeping out of it through its wings its mane its horn it's got these stripes on its body as well as the core of its tail glow between yellow red and blue to reflect the ice type fire type and electric type this design is so great. I think a Pokemon like this is probably what we would get. Something a little bit different from what we're used to. I think there's a lot of art out there depicting an original Kirim or an original dragon as this ultra Pokemon. Something like Complete Zygarde where it's this behemoth uh, of a monster. This is a really cool avenue for the original dragon to go down. I think this great design by this artist, right? Kishirim could be what this Pokemon looks like. Here's another design by a friend, Max Fakemon. I love this one so much. If you're still watching, in the comments, you'll have to let me know what Pokemon you want to see revisited in a Generation 5 remake or whatever game we get next. Make sure you subscribe if you're new, and if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. I love you guys so much. Arceus Bless.